Hey! What up, fam? Hi, friends! What's up, boys and girls? Hey, guys! Yo, yo, what it do? Is that Snoop Dogg? This is a nice precursor to the power of nonlinear editing. Let's try this again. Hello, everyone! My name is Emily Esau. I'm an instructor at West Kentucky Community and Technical College. Hey! I'm here to talk to you about visual communication. That looked like a W. What is visual communication? What is visual communication? Who is visual communication? Why is visual communication? Little inside the actor studio for you. I'm not an actor, I'm a real person. What's the deal with visual communication? Visual communication is communicating visually. Really, we help convey ideas in ways people can see. Ideas like stop and this is where the subway goes and mmm, coffee, and no, no, running out of health, fall back, man, retreat, retreat. It's literally communicating with images. Okay, lady, stop being meta and tell us for real. Let's think of ways you interact with visual communication every day. Think about your phone. Have you ever taken a photo or video? Have you ever shared it on social media? Have you ever shared someone else's photo or video on social media? Think about your textbooks. Can you hold them? Can you read them? Do they have pictures? Think about your life. Do you drink bottled drinks? Do you watch TV? Do you watch movies? Do you eat at restaurants? Social media, books, movies, even restaurant menus are all forms of visual communication. We'll talk about more examples in a bit. So what technologies do we use in visual communication? We use tons of software, lots of Adobe software, software like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Animate, After Effects, Premiere, and lots of video editing software, stuff like Final Cut Pro and iMovie. We also use a ton of hardware, computers, video cameras, phones and mobile devices, vinyl cutters, large format printers, dye sublimation printers, light boxes, cameras, printing presses, audio recording equipment, illustration tablets, and more. So what exactly does this look like? Come take a look. First, let's dive into Photoshop and see what we can transform. Everyone, I mean everyone, has heard of Photoshop. Usually, people are talking about airbrushing and other techniques used by the fashion industry to make people look skinnier or tanner or taller. But it's so much more than that. Of course, it's an image editor. It started that way when it was created in 1987. Hey, so was I. Anyway, Photoshop is obviously used to edit images, but did you know you could make animations or GIFs or put an elephant on the streets of San Francisco? This mighty software is used to transform images in ways it would be impossible to photograph. One of the newer features in Photoshop is the content aware function. In the olden days of Photoshop, when I was but a wee lass, editors had to make every pixel change decision manually. If I didn't like that bird, I would spend days trying to remove it from the picture and replace it with the background green. Thanks to advancements in modern technology, thank you technology, the software is smart enough to do this for you. It is, like the name suggests, content aware. It's aware of the contents around the pixels it thinks you were trying to select and can use that information to fill in whatever hole your selection would leave behind. It looks for areas of high contrast to figure out what's in and out of focus in the photo. We use the content aware function not to be destructive to our image, but to be constructive, to use the image in a new way. It may not always be 100% accurate, but it's so incredibly helpful. What used to take hours and hours of work and concentration is now just a few clicks. What a world we live in! And it's not just good at removing images. You can even scale using content aware functions and make the subject larger or smaller with Photoshop able to fill in any missing pixel information. So here's an example of a common situation. Have you ever had a too many boat problem? This photo has too many boats. I don't want that many boats. I only want a few boats. How do I get rid of some boats? Easy. Select some boats and perform a content aware fill. And just like that, fewer boats. And fewer boats. And fewer. Now we have the perfect amount of boats. You saw that making selections helps the editor essentially cut out the subject from its surroundings and make a composite. A composite is the name for what we create in Photoshop when we combine multiple images and elements together. Creating composites is something that most Photoshoppers will have to do in their careers at one time or another. 
Sometimes making those kinds of selections looks impossible. Back in those olden days, if you wanted to put a tree on a new background, you had to cut out every single branch manually. And heaven forbid the tree have leaves. I say nay nay, this girl has hair. It would be insane to make selections around all that hair. Thanks to the select and mask window, your wispy subject becomes much easier to work with. Her thin hair and transparent skirt are no match for select and mask. By using masks over our images, instead of deleting pixel information, we're doing what is called non-destructive editing. See, I told you it wasn't destructive. If we ever have the need to change the properties of that layer, we could do so without adding or removing any pixels. Now that the selection is made, we can move it onto a new background. We can build on the previous knowledge and remove the runner using content-aware functions. Compositing the images together can be as simple as a drag and drop. Of course, we want to check the light sources and shadows, color casts, perspectives, and any other clues that would give off something isn't right vibes to the viewer. And since we're using non-destructive editing, we can change the properties of the mask layer and make her fit perfectly into her new background. Photoshop is just about as limitless in its abilities as they come. You can spend years learning and working in it, and you'll never know its bounds. Even people who are experts, even people who help design the software don't know what all it's capable of. Compositing, manipulating, editing, animating, and all other forms of creating have a place in this software. I think I'm gonna have this printed and turned into wrapping paper. Okay, Photoshop's pretty cool, right? Totally awesome software. Now, let's look at some hardware. This beautiful piece of equipment is the Graphtech Cutting Plotter CE6000. Okay, fine, it's not that beautiful. Let me start over. Do you like stickers? This makes stickers! More accurately, this is a vinyl cutter and plotter, which means it plots points on special sticker paper, then cuts them out. So yeah, cutting plotter. The process starts with a design on the computer. A designer uses software to prep the file to be cut, and they have to have a buddy because blades can be dangerous. After the file is properly formatted for the cutter, you use the buddy system to load the vinyl into the cutter. Then you get rid of your buddy because he's doing a bad job and you're better at it anyway. The machine plots and cuts all of the points in the design using basically a big needle. I promise you that's what's happening as that little box flies around. Once the plotter is finished, the designer removes the paper from the plotter and transfers it to a workbench. He presents it as a peace offering to his buddy because he wasn't nice before. Besides, this is the fun part. All of the excess sticker paper needs to be removed, leaving only the design intact. You know the design, the one your buddy worked so hard on. This process is called weeding. Just like when you weed a garden, you want to remove all the excess pieces. Every counter from the letters, all of the spaces, anything that isn't part of the design has to go. There are lots of special tools for this that look very similar to box cutters and dental picks. This particular design is for exterior signage, but vinyl is used for stickers, car wraps, decals, t-shirts, home decor and wall art, labels, sports jerseys, banners, laptop skins, and more. Other types of cutting plotters are also printers and can make stickers like this one. That is one drippy dude. He should see a doctor. This process can be very tedious, but the results are high quality and extremely useful. And there's something oddly cathartic about the weeding process. At times it can be frustrating, especially with small pieces, but overall it's an honest day's work. Now what should we do about all those weeds? The sign is then covered with transfer paper for application. So the vinyl cutter may not be the most glamorous of all the technology, but you gotta admit the work is really fun. So all of this has probably brought up some questions. You've got questions, I've got answers. I'm not Staples. Am I in Staples? This isn't Staples, right? What kind of jobs are out there for this? This industry has lots of different career choices. Jobs like graphic design, web design, video production, animation, page layout, branding and marketing, t-shirt printing, CGI for film and video, tattoo art, package design, digital illustration, printmaking, instructional design, industrial design. Okay, so where can I work? So locally, you could work for 
Paxton Media Group, working at the Paducah Sun, or WPSD, American Quilter Society, AQS, socially present, Quick Signs, Kaler Signs, the National Quilt Museum, Lone Oak First Baptist Church, So What's New, Commonwealth Productions, and of course you can work for yourself. And those are just places around here. Globally, whoa. Whoa. Do people still watch Friends? Tattoo shops, design studios, marketing agencies, greeting card companies, advertising agencies. No, can't do that. FX studios, production companies, animation studios, social media marketing firms, film studios, and of course, globally, you can work for yourself. What's the work schedule like? Like many professions, it really depends on the job. If you're on a film shoot, it could be five hours in a studio with craft services or 16 hours on location in another country. If you're editing footage, it could be all day or overnight on set. It could be in a production booth or it could be in a closet. If you're at a vinyl company, one day you could be at the computer in the air conditioner and the next day be out in the hot, sweltering sun wrapping a car. If you're at a news station, it could be evenings for the six o'clock and 10 o'clock broadcasts or mornings for the four o'clock wake up newscast. If you're at an effects studio, it could be a typical nine to five or you could just stay till it's done. If you're at a production company, you could be on set one day and in the studio the next. If you're an animator, you could work so long you forget what time it is. What day is it? Who am I? Who are you people? If you're at a design firm, you could be with clients one day and at home the next. And if you work for yourself, you can work from anywhere at any time. But here's the deal. Every job has one thing in common. No matter what your profession is in this industry, there's one thing you'll always, always, always have to deal with and abide by. The deadline. The deadline. Deadline. If you want to keep your client, meet the deadline. If you want to keep your job, meet the deadline. If you want to get paid, meet the deadline. This industry can be high energy and high intensity, but you have to be able to focus and get the job done on time. If you want to play, you've got other non-billable hours during the day. Okay, tell me more. What kind of qualifications do I need? Training and education can help you decide which part of the industry you want to be in. Education can also help you understand how to work with the technology before you enter the job field. Like most careers, we learn a lot on the job, but it's helpful to have a knowledge base of the tools, especially when a potential employer asks you, how are you in Photoshop? You need a lot of software knowledge. You need to be organized. You need to be able to spell. You need to have big ideas. It helps to have even the time a shred of creativity. And once you get experience, you'll need to have a portfolio. A portfolio is a way to show people who may want to hire you how good you are at your area of expertise. It can come in the form of a website, a book, a reel, a PDF. It's a way for people to get to know you without you even being there. Schooling and training can help you build a portfolio with real world and real world like projects so that you can get a better job and get better money. On a side note, you may have to do a little bit of math. Sorry. Things like calculating dimension and scale, talking about screen resolution, working with page numbers and print signatures, billing. Basically, if you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide, you're in good shape. Oh, and percentages. That's important too. Someone may be late paying you and your terms and conditions say that it's a 20% late fee, but you don't know what 20% of your bill is. So you undercharge them and they're like, oh, I just saved some money. I can be late with them from now on. Or you can overcharge them because you don't know 20% and then you get audited for fraud. Both of those things are bad. Nobody wants that. All right, I'm on board. I'm game. What can I start doing now to prepare me for this career? Start creating anything. If you paint, if you draw, if you make funny YouTube videos, if you entertain your friends on Snapchat, do it for the vine. I ain't gonna do it. Do it for the vine. I can't. Vine is dead. Think of big ideas, whether you can make them real or not. Design a comic book with your own characters. Make your own animations. Decorate your space in an interesting way. Share engaging photos and stories on Instagram. Make memes. Just start creating stuff. Make stuff. Make anything. Another thing you can do to prepare is to get your hands on the technology. Take a multimedia class. Join the journalism club. Join the yearbook committee. Join the AV club. Practice with your phone. Talk to your teachers. Talk to your friends. Find someone you know who is in the industry and start working with the tools. You'll be much more equipped to make your ideas come to life. And just a little advice from me personally. If you're interested in this industry, here are some movies you might want to watch. Helvetica is about the font. 
Yup, you heard me right. But it's not just about the font, it's about the global culture of visual communication. Art and Copy is about the marriage of pictures and words in advertising and about how advertising has helped shape our entire culture. Graphic Means is a new documentary about how the desktop computer revolutionized our creations. Also, if you have Netflix, there's a really good series called Abstract that features people in different capacities from the design world. Interior design, architecture, cars, sneakers. I watch it anytime I've hit a creative block or if I'm letting ideas incubate in my brain. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about the career field or the industry or anything relating to visual communication, you can email me at emily.esaw at kctcs.edu or just come by and see me at the Paducah School of Art and Design. Goodbye! Peace out! Adios! Goodbye!